So in this video, I want to continue at taking a look at the brand new Logic 10.5 update. In the previous episode, we took a look at the Logic 10.5 update with the Logic Remote. And today I want to actually continue exploring the Logic Remote, but this time we are looking at a brand new effect parameter introduced in 10.5 called the Remix Effects. Now, once again, I'm going to be using my iPad Pro with the Logic Remote booted up. But remember, you can set up the Logic Remote on both your iPad or your iPhone. So if you want to learn how to connect the Logic Remote, definitely check out my last video over here where I showed you the setup process and also gave you an overview of all of the different workspaces inside of the application. So the first thing I actually want to do is inside of Logic Pro X on the computer. So we're going to boot up this mixer over here. And you can see on the master channel, we have this effect called remix effect. So I'm going to boot this up and you can see this is the layout. We've got these X and Y sort of grid parameters that we can slide the mouse around to manipulate, for example, a filter or a beat repeat over here. Now we can boot up this exact menu, but on our iPad. So check this out inside the logic remote. You can see I have this effect option in the top right corner. This is going to boot up the exact same interface that you just saw on my iMac. And I can control all the exact same parameters with just a touch of my finger on the touch screen. You can see how responsive that is. Literally, I am moving my finger very erratically and I can't feel or see any latency. Very well optimized in that regard. So on the app, we have a filter and a repeater. Now there's actually more that we can do with these X and Y grids, but I'll get onto those in just a moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to launch um, some scenes and you can see I can start manipulating the sensibility of the performance with the filter over here. So, you know, high pass filter, low pass filter, whatever you kind of want to replicate. And also on the other pad, do a beat repeat in various different zones for different speeds. Which is a pretty cool effect in itself. So on the Logic Remote app, we can actually switch out these two effects parameters over here. So all we got to do is we just literally click on the name. So I just clicked on the filter name there and you can see it presents us with six different options. So for example, let's switch out the filter for wobble and then let's switch out the beat repeater for, let's say a delay. So now I can control the wobble, which is kind of like a phase effect. So if I launch my scene, you can see I've kind of got like a phaser now that I can control on the remote app. And same again, we can add delay. So also on the app are some additional parameters that we can adjust in the center of the app over here. Now this one to the left is called a gate slider. And essentially it just basically is an audio gate. It's just going to cut the audio out to create sort of like a stuttering effect, similar to the beat repeat, but it's not going to stop the track. It's just going to basically turn it up and down to create like a slicer effect. So check this out. If I launch the scene, you can see it cuts the audio out to give it that sort of juddery feel. And then if we switch out this effect for the repeater and combine the two, we can do something pretty cool right there. Now to the right hand side of our gate slider, we have this down sampler slider over here. Now a lot of people online have been referring to this as the bit crusher, which is correct. This essentially is a bit crusher, but the correct name for it is the down sampler slider. So let's explore these parameters a little bit further. So what this down sampler slider is going to do is it's essentially going to change the resolution of the audio coming into it. So it's going to drop the sample rate down so it sounds a little bit grittier. It doesn't sound as high quality to give it a bit more characteristic inside of the mix. So I'll just launch this set of loops here. And you can hear how it adds that gritty noise to the actual performance. 
Now we can actually manipulate how this sounds a little bit further. So if we click the little settings options here, you can see we have loads of different parameters. When I click on the different parameters, you can see up at the top bar, it changes. And um, so if I click on our down sampler, you can see we have the option for both classic or extreme. Now the difference between classic and extreme is basically in extreme, it's going to add this extra high frequency inside of the sort of spectrum when you're playing on it. So it's just one, it's going to make it sound more extreme, but it's just going to add this sort of, it's kind of quite a harsh frequency it adds in to give it that more cutting feel. So see if you can hear it. Yeah, so that is actually pretty obvious. You can, uh, you can definitely hear that higher frequency making it sound a bit more aggressive and extreme. So the final three buttons on the remix effects are these ones here. So we've got the reverse button. So essentially it's just going to play everything backwards when you hold it down. Then we also have the scratch button. So like a classic DJ, like wicka 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 whoop sort of effect on the like, vinyl DJ, we can do this on the app. And finally we have this tape stop button. So the tape stop button is basically going to simulate like tapes inside of a studio when you stop them, how they slow down. It basically does the do 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 and it basically slows the tempo of the track down. So I'll demonstrate these in a performance style. So I'll just launch a cell. Let's first try our rewind. Pretty cool. Scratch. And then finally, our stop. Now, obviously my favorite one there was definitely the stop, but if the other two weren't really for your liking, we can actually refine these and retune them to actually be a little bit more useful. So the way we do that is, we're gonna jump into the settings again by clicking that settings button. And this time, what you'll notice is, when I click on, for example, the stop button, you can see it lights up pink on the left-hand side, but then it also only lights up pink on the right hand side too. So, you know, it never lights up pink the entirety of it. It has two different zones to each of these buttons. And when you'll notice when I switch between the zones and the top here, you'll see the value changes for its length. So right now this stop is a full bar one over one, but on the right hand side, it's a quarter note. Same again for the rewind. This time it's an 18th and a quarter note. So let's actually switch this out for maybe a half a bar. And then over here on the reverse effect, let's make this half a bar as well. And yeah, 16th, I'm happy with 16th on the other side. So I'll demonstrate now the two parameters that we've just changed. So we have our, our longer reverse and our shorter reverse on the other side. Now we have our scratch, which is slightly longer than last time. Or we can use the shorter one on the other side. And then same again, we've got our stop or our slightly shorter stop. Now, one really cool thing that was added to the Logic Remote is it's actually pretty unique to be fair. And I'll be interested if anyone actually uses it. Let me know in the comment section down below if you do. But this effect basically allows us to pick up our iPad and sort of twist it round to actually control the parameters on the Logic Remote. So let me demonstrate this. Right here, we have this sort of rectangle with a little 360 circle on it. So if we turn this on, and I'll do it on both, both pads just so you can see. Now, when I pick up my iPad, you can see it starts to tilt these parameters to the left, to the right, forward, and also back. So I'll just turn off the beat repeater one for now, and let's see how this responds. So basically what's happening here is the Logic Remote is utilizing the fact our iPad has that sort of geometric sort of sensor in it, whatever the word is, you know, I'm not a scientist, but you know, basically that sensor that tells you whether the iPad's facing this way or whether it's facing that way. Logic Remote is fully utilizing this feature inside of the iPad to allow us to twist it around to perform with it. It's pretty unique. Personally, I can't really see myself doing it. It is very responsive, but you may as well just sort of drag it around with your finger as opposed to like twist around with the iPad. It's, it seems pretty crazy. But again, let me know in the comment section down below if you're actually going to use that setup.
So if you want to learn more about the Logic 10.5 update, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel because we're definitely going to be doing some more videos on this topic. And if you've got any questions about the live loops mode inside of Logic 10.5 or the Logic 10.5 update in general, let me know in the comment section down below and I will try my best to put a video together to answer your questions. But as always, I've been Ben Rollins. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.